uh, September the 13th. Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Mario Ritter, Jr. This program is designed for English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. On today's program, you will hear a report from John Russell on the huge amount of plastic waste created around the world. Then, Brian Lynn reports on new iPhones from Apple. Then, Andrew Smith and Jill Robbins discuss tag questions on Lesson of the Day. But first... The world creates about 52 million metric tons of plastic pollution every year, a new study says. More than two-thirds of that plastic comes from the Global South, a term that loosely describes developing countries. The amount of pollution is enough to fill New York City's Central Park with plastic waste as high as the Empire State Building, researchers at the University of Leeds in Britain say. They examined waste produced on the local level at more than 50,000 cities and towns across the world for a study recently released in the publication Nature. The study examined plastic that goes into the open environment. It did not examine plastic that goes into landfills or is properly burned. For 15% of the world's population, government fails to collect and dispose of waste, the study said. This lack of collection and disposal is a big reason Southeast Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa produce the most plastic waste. Lagos, Nigeria released the most plastic pollution of any city, said Costas Velas, the study's lead writer. The other biggest plastic-polluting cities are New Delhi in India, Luanda in Angola, Karachi in Pakistan, and Cairo in Egypt. India leads the world in producing plastic pollution, with more than 9.3 million metric tons a year. That number is far more than double the next big polluting nations, Nigeria and Indonesia. China, often criticized for pollution, is in fourth place, but is making big improvements in reducing waste, Velas said. Other top plastic polluters are Pakistan, Bangladesh, Russia, and Brazil. The top eight nations are responsible for more than half of the world's plastic pollution, the study's data suggests. The United States takes 90th place in plastic pollution, with more than 47,600 metric tons. And Britain takes 135th place, with nearly 4,600 metric tons, the study says. In 2022, most of the world's nations agreed to make the first legally binding treaty on plastic pollution, including in the oceans. Final treaty negotiations take place in South Korea in November. The study used artificial intelligence to research plastics that were improperly burned, about 57% of the pollution, or just dumped. In both cases, very small microplastics, or nanoplastics, are what changed the issue from a marine life problem to a human health threat, Velas said. Several studies this year have looked at how common microplastics are in our drinking water and in people's tissue, such as hearts, brains, and testicles. Doctors and scientists 
are still not quite sure how microplastics threaten human health. Velas called the spread of microplastics everybody's problem, and one that will be an issue for future generations. We shouldn't put the blame, any blame, on the global south, Velas said. And we shouldn't praise ourselves about what we do in the global north in any way. The problem is a lack of resources and ability of government to provide the necessary services to citizens, Velas said. Outside experts worried that the study's attention on pollution, rather than overall plastic production, means the plastic industry is not held responsible. The United Nations Environment Program estimates that plastic production is likely to rise from about 400 million metric tons a year to more than 1.1 billion metric tons. And many scientists believe plastic production releases large amounts of greenhouse gas that contribute to climate change. Neil Tongri is Senior Director of Science and Policy at Gaia, a group of international organizations working on waste and environmental programs. Tongri said of the study's researchers, These guys have defined plastic pollution in a much narrower way, as really just microplastics that are emitted into the environment after the consumer, and it risks us losing our focus on the upstream and saying, Hey, now all we need to do is manage the waste better. Tongri added, it's necessary, but it's not the whole story. I'm John Russell. has launched its latest device, the iPhone 16. The company said it designed the new phone with the latest artificial intelligence AI technology. Apple announced four new iPhone 16 models during a launch event September 9th from its headquarters in Cupertino, California. It said the new models are equipped with special chips to support the increased power needed for AI operations. Apple says the AI built into the devices is part of its newly developed Apple Intelligence technology. Apple leader Tim Cook spoke at the launch event. He said the new iPhone 16 models had been designed for Apple Intelligence from the ground up. Apple Intelligence is available to users of the new iPhone 16 models as well as the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. Users must also be running iOS 18.1, which is expected to launch in October. Apple Intelligence can also be used with iPads and Macs. The company describes the technology as a personal intelligence system designed to help users communicate, work, and express themselves. The new AI tools or features are designed to improve on past ones, including the company's 13-year-old Siri digital assistant. Company officials say they aim to get Siri to better understand requests and actions of the user. One new feature of iPhone 16 models lets users search for pictures in their images collection by describing what an image looks like. 
AI tools can also help users create personal emojis and can organize and provide brief descriptions of emails. Other AI features include improved camera and video production functions. The new iPhone models are also equipped with a new button that reacts to clicks and hand movements to make it easier and faster to set up shots, capture images, and start video recording. The company says the iPhone 16 models will be available for pre-order on September 13th. But since the new AI tools require the iOS 18 update, users will have to wait until they receive that to use the features. Apple has said the iOS 18 release will roll out from October through December. American English will be the first available language followed by more to be added next year. The price for an iPhone 16 will start at just under $800. The top model will cost almost $1,200. Apple's push to include AI tools in its new devices is partly seen as a reaction to moves by competitors like Samsung and Google. Both of those companies have already offered users powerful new AI tools in their latest smartphone models. In addition to the new AI features offered, Apple has also teamed up with ChatGPT developer OpenAI to give users the chance to use that company's technology for more complex operations. In June, Apple announced it was working with OpenAI to create a series of AI tools for iPhones and other personal devices. Apple officials have noted that all users have the ability to turn off any AI tools they do not want. The company has long claimed it highly values personal privacy and says it has built tools into its operating systems to protect user data. Apple said it took the same steps to provide privacy protections for its new AI tools. Besides announcing the new AI-equipped devices, Apple also introduced new models of its Apple Watch and AirPods headphones. The Apple Watch Series 10 has a larger and brighter display that aims to improve views from any position. The changes to Apple Watch also include additional health features, such as a sleep monitor tool that aims to identify the disorder sleep apnea. Apple says the new AirPods 4 come with an improved chip for better audio quality as well as more active noise cancellation. The devices are also equipped with a tool to help users find lost AirPods. It plays a sound when Apple's Find Me app is used to find lost devices. I'm Brian Lynn. You are listening to the VOA Learning English podcast. You just heard our weekly technology report. Now Brian Lynn is here to talk more about his report. Thanks for joining me, Brian. Of course. Thank you for having me. This week you reported on Apple's upcoming release of new iPhone models built with a series of new AI tools. 
At a recent launch event, the company explained some ways these tools are designed to help users. But a big question remains. Will the new changes lead more people to buy these upgraded devices? Yes, you're right. This is a very important question, especially for Apple, which has struggled to increase its iPhone sales when its new devices may not offer meaningful changes to users. And until recently, the company was experiencing quarterly decreases in sales of its iPhones and other devices. That did change, though, in the latest quarter, when Apple reported earnings rose 5% from the previous year. And some financial experts say even this increase might have been influenced by Apple's plans to include these AI features in new devices. What are some of the other opinions you've heard on how these changes will be received by iPhone users? Well, some financial experts have noted they think Apple could increase their iPhone sales because of the latest changes. For example, the company's stock has climbed more than 10% since Apple's yearly developers conference in June, and it was at that conference that Apple explained its plans to upgrade its new devices with the latest AI tools. The report noted Apple's changes came after competing device developers, including Samsung and Google, had already upgraded their phones with new AI technology. How do you think this influenced the timing of Apple's announcement? So, some expert opinions I've seen say this was necessary for Apple to release these changes now, uh, partly for competitive reasons. They have noted that tech companies in general have really been diving in deep with their AI offerings. Uh, we've already seen quite a lot of these from others, Google, Microsoft, and Meta, for example. And the analysts said it was very important for Apple to take its own moves in this direction. So even though these AI systems are still being developed and tested, experts say this announcement was very helpful in positioning Apple as offering its own version of this still exploding technology. Okay, thanks again for joining me, Brian. We're looking forward to next week's technology report. You're welcome. Thank you, Mario. VOA Learning English has launched a new program for children. It is called Let's Learn English with Anna. The new course aims to teach children American English through asking and answering questions and experiencing fun situations. For more information, visit our website, learningenglish.voanews.com. Next, listen for the lesson of the day on the subject of tag questions. And be sure to listen tomorrow for our Everyday Grammar program and another lesson of the day. Jill Robbins. And I'm Andrew Smith. You're listening to the Learning English Podcast. Welcome to the part of the show where we help you do more with our series, Let's Learn English. The series shows Ana Mateo in her work and life in Washington, D.C. People all over the world like to talk about the weather, don't they, Jill? They do. It's an important part of daily life. 
You know what else people like to talk about? What's that? Other people. That's true, and they like watching them too. In lesson 15 of Let's Learn English, Anna gets to enjoy some nice weather and watch all kinds of people walk by. Let's listen. Hello! People from all over the world come to Washington, D.C. When I'm at work, I love eating lunch outside. I like to watch people walking by. They all look very different. Today, my friend Ashley is eating lunch with me. Ashley, today the weather is beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it is. <sighs> Ooh, we have to return to work. No, we have time. Let's people watch a little more. It helps that Anna lives in Washington, D.C., doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. She can see people from many different countries almost every day. In Lesson 15, it also helps that the weather is nice. She mentions it to her friend Ashley, and then Anna's boss, Miss Weaver, mentions it to Anna. Ashley, today the weather is beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is, Miss Weaver. I noticed that each of them used a tag question when they asked about the weather, didn't they? That's right. <laughs> they did. And I think we should explain a bit about this. I do, too. Okay. For example, let's say that it is a sunny and beautiful day. If I say to Jill... It's a nice day. Jill would agree. I can agree by saying something like, Yes, it sure is. So, Jill agrees with me. Tag questions basically ask if the listener agrees with the speaker. So, if I say, It's a nice day, isn't it? I'm asking Jill if she agrees that it's a nice day. So my answer would be the same as before, because I agree. I could just say, yes, it is. But if I want to stress how nice it is, I might say, it sure is. Tag questions might be confusing for some learners if they try to get the meaning based on the exact words spoken. When I say, isn't it, which is the shortened form of, is it not? The word not can be confusing because in a tag question, it actually means something different from not. Yep. The tag question really means the same thing as adding the short question, right? That's true. You can also think about it this way. If I say, isn't it, at the end of a sentence, I'm really saying, is this in fact true? So, listen to these two examples. Example one. This restaurant is really good. Is this, in fact, true? Example two. This restaurant is really good, isn't it? Example one and example two mean the exact same thing. The speaker wants to know if the listener agrees with the idea that the restaurant is, in fact, good. You're listening to the Learning English Podcast. We also use tag questions with the auxiliary do. Don't we, Jill? Yes, we do. <laughs> Let's give our listeners some more examples of tag questions, but with different forms of the verbs. Okay, I'll start. You like teaching English, don't you? Yes, I do. That professor talks a lot, doesn't she? Yeah, she sure does. That was a great concert, wasn't it? Yeah, it sure was. We don't have to work tomorrow, do we? No, we don't. In this example, the tag or end of my question was simply, do we? The not was put in the first part of the question when I said, we don't have to work tomorrow. The not goes at the end tag for positive statements like, the weather is nice, isn't it? And in the beginning part for negative statements. 
And there is another case we should explain. If we are not asking if someone agrees, like about the nice weather, but instead are really trying to confirm if something is in fact true, then we usually put the not into the first part of the question. And there is no tag at the end. All right, let's give an example. I can say, doesn't Michael work in California? That means Andrew thinks Michael does, in fact, work in California, but he is asking to check. Doesn't Michael work in California means, is it, in fact, the case that Michael works in California? Okay, by now I think we've explained enough about tag questions, don't you? Yes, indeed. <laughs> but what about people watching? Anna likes to do that, and so does her boss, Ms. Weaver. They just look at people for a brief moment. They don't really stare at them. That would be rude, wouldn't it? In general, that would be rude, especially if the people are close by. So we usually just look at a person for a few moments, but it does depend on the distance. Is people watching something you like to do too, Andrew? Um, yeah, sometimes, especially in places like airports or tourist areas like Washington, where there are a mix of people from different areas. And I think that when you really know a culture deeply, you can make some good guesses about what country or even what area of a country people are from, sometimes just based on their clothes. That's true. You are more aware of small details. Uh, for example, I spent some time in France, and I can often notice if someone is from France just by some very small details in clothing and the way they walk and move their body. I don't even have to hear them speak. That's because you've seen more details of French culture. Yes, but on the other hand, I think we all need to be careful not to jump to conclusions about other people just based on the way they look. Especially if that leads you to stereotype or overgeneralize about other people. Each person has their own individual story to tell. You know, this is a big, deep topic that I think is worth a longer discussion. Why don't we continue with this in another Learning English podcast soon? I think that's a good idea. There is a lot to talk about. Oh, but before we go, I just thought of another really good place to people watch. What's that? It rhymes with the number two. Hmm, it rhymes with two. The zoo? Yes. Sometimes I think it's more fun to watch the people watching the animals than to watch the animals themselves. I think you're right. But, you know, that's kind of a tricky sentence you just said. Let's play it again for our listeners. Let's play it four times. Okay, here we go. Okay, but before we do, here's something our listeners can try. After you hear the sentence the first time, try to speak along with the sentence the next three times the sentence repeats. Or try to write down what you hear and then play it again and try to repeat it. Here's the sentence. Sometimes I think it's more fun to watch the people watching the animals than to watch the animals themselves. Sometimes I think it's more fun to watch the people watching the animals than to watch the animals themselves. Sometimes I think it's more fun to watch the people watching the animals than to watch the animals themselves. Sometimes I think it's more fun to watch the people watching the animals than to watch the animals themselves. Well, like we said, there's lots more we could say about people watching and cultures. So listen for that discussion in another Learning English podcast soon. And be sure to keep learning English with VOA Learning English. I'm Jill Robbins. And I'm Andrew Smith.
And that's our program for today. Join us again tomorrow to keep learning English through stories from around the world. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Mario Ritter Jr.